All right, I'm Celeste. And I'm Danielle. And we are the founders of the Somatica Institute of Sex and Relationship Coaching. And in the Institute, we train coaches and offer certification in sex and relationship coaching. And we also, the training is also open for people interested in personal growth. What we know for sure is that training is going to change your life and it changed many people's lives and it will offer you so much more self-love, self-acceptance and freedom to live the life that you really want to live and help others do the same. So today we're going to talk to you all about coaching, both how it it can be an amazingly fun thing to do in your personal life. And also if you want to be a coach, how it can be a a therapeutic modality. You meant meant flirting. I said said coaching. I was like, did I say coaching? (laughs) Boy, it's been a long week. We're going to talk about flirting today. Um, Hopefully I have enough of a brain left to do it or else Danielle's Danielle's going to talk with you about flirting today. I want to do that. <laughs> All right. So let's talk a little bit about how to flirt. Um, flirting, I think flirting is really, really important in any phase of a relationship. You know, at the beginning, when you're first meeting someone, you want to bring that energy into the experience right away so that it stays fun and exciting. And, and also, it's really, really helpful to have that in long-term relationships. But I will say that flirting is a very vulnerable thing to do because it opens you up to the potential of rejection. And I think that's why sometimes people kind of like hold back their flirt. I know one time, it was, it was particularly hard when I was um, mostly dating women. Men are much easier when it comes to flirting. <laughs> When I was mostly dating women, I remember this one, I was at a bar and it wasn't a gay bar, but I was checking out this woman and I was like smiling at her. And then I kind of walked up and she's like, why, why are you staring at me? <laughs> I was like, okay, never mind. I'll go the other direction. So, so it is, it is scary. And I think it's really, really brave. And, and, but, you know, if you get out there and do it, then really wonderful things can happen. So why is it important to flirt? So I think flirting is really, really important, like in the dating phase, especially right at the beginning, because if you don't start out with like a flirtatious energy, then you might end up in the friend zone, as they say. I remember this one time I went on a date with this guy and he, we got to the end of the date and there had just been like no flirtation. He was sweet. He brought me like cookies that he baked at home. But then, you know, I said, Hey, why don't we take a walk around the block? And I said, you know, we were both in relationship. It was like an open relationship situation. So it was like pretty much like we both knew we were looking for sex. And, and, and I said, Hey, it just feels like you didn't flirt with me at all in the, in the connection. And he's like, well, I was kind of thinking of this as date zero. It was like date zero. Well, it was definitely date zero. Like nothing happened. (laughs) Nothing happened after that. So, so I, you know, I feel like it's just so important to bring that energy early on in the connection. And flirting is definitely important in long-term relationship because, you know, things can turn a little mundane and kind of bringing flirting can be so much more enlivening and fun and, and connecting and, you know, like you're doing the chores and then you kind of make some comments about like how, like, hey, what should we prioritize this weekend? And you kind of remember that you have other parts in your life that are about you and your partner and not only about like doing the mundane life chores and living life day to day. (laughs) It's so funny. Christian says about day zero, it was definitely one of us tech workers. Yes, it was one of you tech workers. (laughs) (laughs) Let's talk a little bit about like how to flirt and it is really really important when you start flirting to kind of get not be so goal oriented because if you're goal oriented you miss up all the fun and if you're willing to just play and be willing to maybe be rejected like you don't know how a flirt's gonna go it's kind of like playing ball with someone that's not necessarily ready to play with you but you kind of nudge them a little bit so you start by if you don't come in goal oriented and you're willing to play and come in with this fun and also pay attention to people's response so if people are not willing to play with you you go look for someone else to play with uh that can really help where do people go wrong in flirting because i think a lot of times like people are trying to flirt as best they can but there are flirts that are more kind of creepy or awkward that we don't we definitely do not recommend so people can come off 
as creepy when they're kind of over sexualizing a situation right from the beginning. They lead completely with sexuality and like sexual innuendos, like, you know, like, I drink anything that touched your lips or something like that <laughs> before you've even made a connection at all. And sometimes, you know, you can bring in more sexiness earlier on. And, you know, some people are not, you know, are not really ready for that. So you have to feel it out. But I think it's better to, to go for a more gentle flirt flirtation, more with your energy and maybe something like, you know, and we'll talk more specifically about what yummy ways are, but definitely you don't want to bring in that creepy vibe. You know, you don't want to bring in over-sexualization right off the bat or else you will be labeled as creepy. Yeah. You also really don't want to be too much in your head and disconnected from your erotic energy because a lot of flirting is about connecting with your erotic energy. And if your erotic energy doesn't flow, it can feel very disconnected. And you can say kind of like sentences that sound like flirting, but if it's not backed up with erotic energy, it's just not going to fly. People won't understand what you're talking about. Yeah. And then the last no-no flirt to me is the um, pickup artist flirt. I don't know if y'all have heard of pickup artists, but there are people who just go out and try to like get as many, you know, check boxes as they can or whatever notches on the belt. So sometimes people, they've been told to like wear like silly shiny hats or like necklaces that are like bling or like chick <laughs> Do you remember this guy who like flirting with us and he was wearing this like very weird hat and I was like, I was so stunned by the hat. I just did not hear a word he was saying. <laughs> totally. And then they teach you to like nag people and like put them down. None of this is good flirting. And it's so obvious. Like I know I've had pickup artists try to flirt with me and I was just like, you're a pickup artist. <laughs> and they're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, if you want, I mean, it's, if you want to just like, find you know really drunk people to sort of impress and then maybe try the pickup artist thing but I think in general if you want to make a deeper intimate connection it's not it's kind of a, a yucky flirt I want to I want to answer this question because it's a really good one how can we bring flirtation energy to work without attracting the wrong kind of attention or give people the wrong idea it has happened to me that I bring playful energy and guys mistake it for interest I never know how to modulate this so I think it's impossible to behave in a way for the rest of your life where no one will ever get the wrong idea of what you're bringing across, right? So if you're like playful and having fun and enjoying a connection and then somebody thinks that something more is going to happen, maybe they'll, you know, ask you or ask you on a date and then you could say, oh my gosh, thank you so much, you know, for being so brave. I think the thing is when we let people down, most times we do that in a way that's kind of feels like we're upset that they asked us or surprised or confused. And I think instead, if you be, if you're really appreciative, like, man, it's so brave. This is what I always tell people when they ask me out on a date, I say, wow, it's so brave to be the one to initiate something like that. And I'm not available for dating right now, or that's not what I'm looking for, but, but good for you for getting out there and asking. To me, that's like the nicest way to to say no thank you to somebody because it is hard to ask somebody out and people won't, you know, you, in order to bring your full self, you have to be ready to say no and to be able to let people down. I also want to talk a little bit about, uh, we like kind of starting with the blocks and challenges and then we promise we're going to go into like what to do and how to do it. So why is it, why it can be challenging to flirt? Because if someone flirts with you, it really flushes you with kind of like an unexpected erotic energy. And it can feel like overwhelming or it feels like your body's out of control. I remember someone, I was standing in line to the library before COVID and I was like, this cute guy was flirting with me. And I just like completely was so giggly and I'd lo like, I dropped the books. I was just like so overwhelmed with the flirt. I did not expect it but then. So it can be kind of a little discombobulating and, and create kind of like discomfort. So if we're not used to running this energy and enjoying it in our body, we might avoid flirting. Yeah, I think another reason people avoid flirting is a little bit what the, the question was about like the flirting at work thing is the feeling of like, if I go into a flirt, someone's going to think something is going to happen. And you know, how do I get out of that? Or how do I manage that? And I do feel like it's, you know, sometimes flirting is just flirting, and you don't actually really want something out of it but you really do want to play and enjoy the energy and I know sometimes I'll walk down the street and I'll just like 
you know, like someone will look at me and I'll look at them and you can feel this really nice vibe and there's a smile, you know, we used to be able to say, see each other's smiles before we all had to wear masks <laughs> everywhere we went. <laughs> I like try really hard to smile with my eyes now, but I don't think it's as effective. But, you know, you smile and then you just feel the energy and you move on and it's really, really fun. And I think also, you know, maybe you're in like a, a situation in a bar or you're, you meet somebody, you know, in a, in a cafe or something, and you're just enjoying talking to them. And so you need to kind of have ways to unwind a flirt, you know, like, oh, it was so, it was so fun, you know, connecting with you. I'm going to get on with my day now or something like that, that just moves your way. You need to know that you can have boundaries and you don't have to go any further than flirting. It's really, really important. We talked a lot about it recently in our training about like the way that we get called teases or something like that. If we don't, you know, if we think like as though we're never supposed to just have that playful energy and then say, that's all I wanted out of this. So if you do have the feeling like if I try to get out of this flirt, it might, you know, the other person might get upset with me or angry because you've picked up on that kind of vibe. I think it's really important to just like make an excuse like, oh, if I need to run to the bathroom, you know, and then just fade away. So, you, you know, you want to be careful and notice your safety in those kinds of situations. But in general, I think a lot of people just want to enjoy each other and have fun and have a good time. And it's okay to say, yeah, that's, you know, that was enough. I really had a great time with you. Because flirting does feel awesome. And I think I, it, it like really brings up so much joy if you relax and feel safe and you feel like your boundary is going to be respected. It can be such a wonderful way to connect with other people. So one of the challenging in long-term relationships that people don't flirt is because they're afraid that that's a commitment to something they're not ready to commit. So they start to kind of pull back with all the amazing, fun things that they used to do when people were dating right so they're not like so they're not going to make this flirtatious suggestions or they're not going to be touching because they're afraid that they're committing to more than what they actually want to do which is like connect with some with their partners now so it is good to talk about about that and allow or invite a lot of flirting without committing to sex and say, hey, I really want to flirt with you. And I want us to have so much more fun in our connection. So, but let's look at it as in the moment flirt and not think that that's an invitation for something. I'm not ready for sex right now. Yeah. So I think there are other, other times when people are, have, when have, people have blocks to flirting sometimes in the same kind of thing where in your, you're in a long-term relationship and you're afraid to flirt with your partner, you know, like you're not ready for sex, but you just want to have a little playful flirtatious energy. So you might, you know, you might be able to say like, I really want to flirt with you right now, but I'm not feeling in the mood for sex. Can we just play with some flirtatious energy and just like let yourself off the hook so that you can enjoy the flirt? Also, I think, you know, if you're in a monogamous relationship, you might be worried that it's not okay to flirt. I think it's really, really important, you know, to keep your agreements in a relationship, but to talk about maybe, are you okay with flirting with other people? Because I think what happens sometimes is when we go into monogamous relationship, if we shut down our erotic energy to everyone else in the world, and we think we're only supposed to have it with this person, we're only supposed to enjoy that energy with this person, it's kind of like one river. So if you kind of dam it down in most places, you might end up feeling it dammed down in your relationship as well. And it's really, really helpful to kind of keep it flowing in your body and your life and to just walk around being like, I'm alive. I'm an erotic being. I don't have to have that, you know, shut down in every area of my life and compartmentalized in only one place. And instead just, you know, just say like, I can I can enjoy the energy and still keep my agreements. Definitely. And that's so, so let's see what can help us to be kind of pump us up for a flirt, right? Like to feel much more flirtatious. And as Celeste already said, like feeling more flirtatious means like also letting ourselves connect with this like feeling of being alive and excited about life. Sometimes before like learning how to flirt with someone else, you can focus on flirting with yourself. You can like take like a little bit like, you know, like self-pleasuring flirt uh, session with yourself <laughs> you can just like you know like take a few breaths and start to sense into your body and let yourself connect with sensations and then you can maybe be in front of the mirror and kind of glimpse and 
do those like let yourself play with yourself and it's okay to explore what it would look like and to 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 flirt as you are doing more like body body flirts like you know like talking to yourself in the mirror and letting yourself feel this charming person and pumping yourself up yeah i think before we go into the you know what's the perfect flirting attitude. I think this is a good question. Is there a difference between flirting and playful? Often I feel playful, playful, but don't necessarily feel that I'm operating from erotic energy. I think that is the difference, right? Mm -hmm. A hundred percent. That's, that's the definition of the difference. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're flirting, if you're, if you're playful and you're bringing your erotic energy, it's flirtatious and maybe you're just playful. Maybe you just want to like wrestle or something, but it doesn't feel erotic to you it's more just like you're being silly you know I think that's more the in the playful realm so when I think about the perfect flirting attitude I feel like it's a very like open like free warm but also just like expansive energy like it doesn't it's not like I'm trying to make something happen it's more like I am in my eroticism and my joy and my fun and I'm you know and I'm receiving you and I'm also like appreciating you and bringing this feeling of like I want to get to know you better I want to feel who you are and I want to share who I am but I want to do that while running some good erotic energy through my body so it's almost like I'm just enjoying being alive being an erotic person and I'm kind of like laid back, not trying to make something happen and just feeling the connection between us and like letting it, you know, like a little bit of a tennis match, like letting it bounce back and forth, whether that's physically or verbally, you know, just eye contact in whatever way that you're playing with that energy, just letting it move between you. I remember this uh, guy that, you know, like I was doing like I, I was meeting with a friend and I like came out, it, it was in a hotel and the, the elevator was packed with people and I was like standing with my friend on one side of the elevator and there was a, this guy was standing with his girlfriend she they would definitely look like they were hanging over over each other and touching each other and he kind of looked at me and he kind of checked me out and he went like up and down and I was wearing this neck necklace that kind of fell in my cleavage and he was like nice necklace and I was like oh god this felt so good like through the people through the elevator it was a big one i felt all this erotic energy like completely flushing me this is probably the best flirt that i experienced in my life so <laughs> body language is a lot to say to, to kind of you know like you can flirt with your body language you can flirt with your energy and this was an example for that like if you check someone out then you can do that and you send this very erotic energy it is very powerful. Yeah, I think some ways to flirt with body language are like, well, firstly, you want to make sure that you're the right distance from the person. And the way you can tell is if, you know, if they're still really like breathing and they feel like they have an open moving energy, if you get too close to somebody, you'll be able to tell because they might start to get very like still or shut down and not, you know, not really move. And then you can bring in like playful body language, like touching somebody's arm or, you know, like leaning in and whispering in their ear or even like brushing their hair back. If you, if you, if you're at like a later stage of flirting, you know, like blush, brushing their hair back or being like, Ooh, let me feel that, you know, fuzziness on your beard or something like that <laughs> to play with more, some of the physical physical body language yeah definitely i think women have a lot of power with their touch even like a little like touch on the you know like chest or something like this you can get a long way of flirting this way <laughs> well. yeah and too i encourage like when i teach men how to do like dating and you know sort of meeting i think it is good at some point to have you know like you want the touch to not be like a sexual touch but just like a like more like a friendly quick touch, you know, that's just like, oh my God, totally, I get that, you know, to just feel the more like the closeness of the energy. You can tell if somebody doesn't want to be touched, they have a more like quiet distanced sense to them. And then it's not good to touch. But if somebody's feeling like if they're seen really open, they're laughing and stuff like that, then it's probably safe to just do like a non-sexual touch early on in a flirting connection. Which kind of like, you know, like 
reminds me that the bottom line of flirting is that it doesn't have, brings me back to like, it doesn't have a goal and it doesn't have a one direct energy. So you're not too intense. There's something about like the thing that is not, the stuff that's not said is as powerful as the stuff that is said. And the energy that you're pulling away is as powerful as the energy that you're bringing in. So this kind of like not knowing what's happening is what makes a flirt powerful. And I think that's kind of an answer to your question too, Riley, like what's an appropriate flirt? It's really you want to feel the connection with the other person and see what, what they're ready for and bring in the energy, but not the over-sexualization and the touch if it feels like they're ready for it. So another way that people really like to flirt is flirting with words. And I think people get really confused about this because they think that that means like bringing in sexual innuendo most of the time, in my experience, when people have tried to bring in sexual innuendo to flirt, it, it feels cheesy and kind of falls flat for me, unless they're really good at it. <laughs> I think more when I say like, you know, flirting, it can be like, like flirting with words. It can be like, you know, when you're talking to somebody and maybe you're talking about like a vacation that you took, or you're talking about the day or something. And then you, you more bring in like an embodied experience of it. Like, like, oh, it's just been such a beautiful day. The weather's been so warm. You know, I can just like feel the way that it's like warms up my skin during the day or something where you're sort of bringing your, your, you're using your words to bring your body into it a little bit more. And then some people like, like flirting, that's a little bit more like dueling or something, you know, where you're just like, like a little bit like sparring with each other in, you know, in some kind of way, like showing, oh, who's, you know, who's the smart one here and playing with that energy a little bit. Some people really like that flirtation, that flirtation mode. You just want to be careful with that, that you don't, you're not like putting the other person down. You're just like, you know, you're always kind of like lifting each other up in a way, I think. And Annie, to your questions, you have a great question. Sometimes I have trouble recognizing when someone is flirting with me. I can't always tell if someone is flirting or just being nice. And that's exactly the point of flirting that you don't really know, right? Uh, for example, I've had people in the past tell me that someone has obviously flirting with me, but I just didn't pick, pick up on it. So maybe what I want to say, the whole point of flirting is that it's not obvious. And I want to invite, there's like the initiating a flirt and there's the receiving of a flirt. And I want to invite, we talk a lot about that in the Somatica training about like having a pilot light and kind of like creating our own lending strip for any, any erotic energy that might come towards us. That means that we are connected to our sexuality and therefore we might translate things you know, sometimes people are just nice to me, but if I think that they're flirting with me, more to me, I get more enjoyment of the day. So it's okay to have this like open and it's wonderful to have this like open connection to my own erotic energy. So then when people are nice, I can imagine them as flirting. And it's not like we need to really know what's happening. It's more about, I get to have a better day that day. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's really fun too. If you're like, the other thing I wanted to bring up was just compliments, because I think a lot of times people give compliments with words just, and they can be very generic compliments like, oh, you're so beautiful, or, you know, like that nice dress or something like that. But I think if you make the compliment much more specific to the person, then it's going to land much deeper and it's going to be a much yummier flirt. Like, wow, I love the way that the, you know, the light in here is just making your skin glow. It's so beautiful or something like that, that is more like specific or your smile lights up the room. It's so infectious or something like that. So those are other like verbal, verbal flirtations. So there are different kinds of flirting styles and we want to like help you find yours and help you develop the ones that you might feel more uh, inclined to. For example, you can be a shy flirt and you can just be someone who's like more like kind of like kind of receiving it and kind of sitting and kind of feeling into it and letting it come to you and blush. <laughs> I also sometimes feel like, like there are times when I feel like I'm an intellectual flirt. I had this one professor in college and he, after we were no longer student and professor, maybe like five years later or something, we went to lunch together and he was just like talking about his theories. <laughs> I was so turned on and I was having such a great time. And maybe like a year after that, we went to lunch and I was like, you know, 
I was really turned on and he's like, God, I never, like, he never would have guessed that like I was flirting with him because we just, there was such an age difference and he was my professor and he was being totally appropriate, even though we weren't in that relationship anymore. But I just thought, oh my God, when somebody's really smart, it's super fun. It's like, feels like flirtation to me. And we're just like talking about ideas and playing with that back and forth intellectual flirtation. Yeah, I'm probably mostly a teasing flirt. And that means that I kind of like to make people feel a little bit embarrassed or uncomfortable, you know, like show them something about themselves that they're not fully aware of. So it really turns me on. And it's not in a way that makes them shut down or feel shame, but it's more like excitement with blushing, that kind of flirt. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably more like a body flirt, like well, you can tell me you are, Dan. You can are tell, the <laughs> Go ahead, tell the story. Oh my God. I feel today. I'm flush with the, with the intensity when I think about it. So I remember Sis and I just started to work together and did not know her as well as I know her today. And there was this guy who we were locked out of her apartment. And then this guy came and started to like, you know, like unlock, unlock the, the, the door. And she was like standing there and she, he was really cute. And she was just standing there. She was like stretching and just like bring all her arousal, all her erotic energy, and damn, she has a lot of it into her body. And I was like, what is just happening in front of me? You know, I was much more naive and shy back then. <laughs> so let's were just like, I was like mm -hmm. launching her body Whoa. completely. <laughs> Oh, so I, don't I think he was like Israeli or something, wasn't he? Yes, he was. So he was. <laughs> I still remember him, the locksmith. The locksmith, <laughs> the locksmith story of flirting, yeah. You can definitely bring a combination of these different energies, you know, but that's more of like a, like, like a strut. I like to bring a little bit of a strut and yeah, like <laughs> hair, hair, this kind of, you know. <laughs> Those are ways that I flirt for sure. Yeah. So just kind of to take a pause for a second and tell you, tell you what all this flirting has to do with the training, because it has a lot to do with the training, both because, um, Teaching people how to flirt is something that we love doing. It helps us empower people. People, when they feel comfortable and relaxed to flirt, they feel much more open and connected to their pilot light and alive. And also, as Somatica coaches, we want to help our coaches become much more relaxed around flirting with our clients because it is a therapeutic modality when we come in and we lead with our sexuality and we feel comfortable in our bodies and we feel comfortable to flirt with our clients so much shame melts melts down and people just feel so welcomed in in the coaching room and they feel like wow like what I feel that's so bad about me is actually can be arousing or such a turn on to someone else and feeling this lightness of being flirted with creates such a great rapport with people. And of course we don't cross boundaries, but we really invite people into their sexuality by modeling us being in our sexuality and flirting with them throughout. It's like, you know, like a spoonful of sugar it makes the medicine go down. So this is our spoonful of sugar to help our clients to feel so much better about themselves and so much more alive and connected. Wonderful. So we really want, we had a great time with you. All my exhaustion just lifted from all this flirting and conversation. I feel so here and excited and alive and energized. So it was wonderful to share this with you. If you liked what you saw here, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Celeste and Danielle, and also like us on Facebook. And um, we can't wait to see more of you. <music>